Eggs rules. It has zero weld and all zero body. It was only seat belt. <laughs> Welcome back to Zach's workshop. Today we have our buddy Dylan here. Everybody say hi to Dylan. Hi. Hi Dylan. Dylan is a guy that uh, I derby with that uh, he's become a very good friend and it's because of the demolition derby so I figured he would be the next good person to interview. Dylan, how long have you been demolition derbying? Uh, probably over 10 years. I don't quite remember when I started what was your first demolition derby? Schaumburg. Schaumburg? Yeah. Did you do very well? Uh, I think I took third, but I don't remember. Yeah. Hmm. Now, along with demolition derby, you've been getting into enduro racing. How do you like that? I like it a lot better. It's uh, higher speed, and um, there's a chance where I'm not going to destroy the car in one shot, so a lot less work. Have you done a race without destroying a car? No. Neither have I. So, I guess we're one for one on that. Yeah. Um, what you got you into Demolition Derby in the first place? Uh, originally, I was laid up with uh, surgery on my shoulder, and I had extra time to build a car for somebody else, and then they didn't end up driving it. So then it sat at the farm for a year, and then the next year came around, and I couldn't get a hold of them, so I went, well, I'm Derby. So you built a car for somebody else that didn't show up, so then you decided to run it. Yep. Seems fair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what demolition derby do you consider to be your hometown show? Schaumburg was the first one, and I have a lot of family from Schaumburg, so that one would be my you, hometown one. Do you try to attend that show every year? I have, but I have missed a few years. I've had some good memories in Schaumburg with you as well, considering this year you wrecked my most favorite car and it turned out to be a hunk of junk after you wrecked it. Yes, I did. Mm. Is there a car in the demolition derby world that you absolutely hate? Uh, Buicks and old Oldsmobiles. Yeah, I don't like them that much either. Yeah, uh, I bought them and they just ended up costing me way too much to, to run and... I even had one, built it, ran fine, yeah. took it to the derby, would not start, had to shove it back on the trailer, got it home, it fired up fine, ran around the yard, the yard and then caught fire. Now I know, <laughs> scrapping it. So you know what, when a vehicle of mine catches on fire, I just usually like to take it as a sign that it wants to die. Yeah. You've started doing the enduro races. Is there any words of advice to people just getting into Enduros? Expect that you're going to wreck. Expect that you're going to wreck. Yeah. Is there a type of car that you would recommend? Probably something... Get a six-cylinder. Um, and try to find something kind of middle... The middle range between something that's fast and just a little bit heavy, but still light enough to be fast to be able to take off the line fairly quickly. So you're kind of not recommending like the 3.1 Luminas, you're more recommending like the imports, like uh, Tiburons, Hondas that are V6s and Maximas kind of thing? Yeah, they're, they're heavy enough that they'll hold their own going into the corner, but they're not too light that you're going to spin during the corner. Nice, because they have the extra weight to help them through the corner. Yes. Choosing your number in a demolition derby is usually something very personal to somebody. How did you choose your number? That was my wife's cup size when I met her. You mean her boob size? Yeah. That's awesome. Is there certain cars that you prefer to demolition derby? I derby whatever I can get my hands on for extremely cheap. So you uh, don't have like a preference between Dodge, Chrysler, Ford, Import? No, you, it usually ends up being um, Cavaliers and Sunfires because they're cheap and available. Yeah, I find them very cheap and they're very easy to work on and a lot of parts interchange. Oh yeah. 
so that it's easy to stockpile parts when you need them. Do you like fuel injected cars or carbureted cars? Had any major problems with wiring? I've never ran a carbureted car. Really? Never ran one. Oh. Have you ever got hurt in the demolition derby ring or the enduro ring? And if you did, what's the worst one? Um, derby, not really. Uh, got the knot wind knocked out of me a few times. The endurance race, when I crashed, uh, I believe I broke a rib, but I never got it checked out. I remember that crash. That was pretty intense. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways to drive in a demolition derby. There's You can drive to win, you can drive to hit hard, you can drive to have fun. What is your preference in driving? I just go out there to have fun. Uh, I try to hit hard. Um... Just, I'm just going out. I've never won, so I'm just out there to have fun. I've been in the ring with Dylan, and I know that he hits hard. If he gets the opportunity to line you up for a track shot, it doesn't matter if you're his best friend or his worst enemy. He's going to take that track shot on you. It doesn't matter. And he's actually taken me out in one shot before. He's destroyed a strut on a car. So, Dylan, I, you've been coming out of Demolition Derby and going into Enduros. What made you get into Enduro racing? Um, I started doing figure eights more than the demolition derbies. So you're talking the figure eights in the demolition derby ring before the demolition derby? Yes. Okay. And I got into those just because it was more racing based and you had a bit of an objective. Like, yeah, you could hit the cars. And then, but I didn't want to go into oval racing because there was a lot of money and, um, uh, the rules too. There was really, really stingy rules, and and I also didn't want to dedicate every weekend of my summer to going and racing every Saturday night. So then I found out through uh, Curtis about the endurance racing, and uh, it's almost the exact same build rules as a demolition derby, give or take. But, and then it's one day every two months, and uh, it's an actual three or four hundred lap race around an oval track. There's a lot of cars out there, Dylan, some that are a little bit out of my reach. Like, for example, I really, really want to smash a Chevy HHR. I don't know what it is. They've cut me off in traffic too many times, and I think they look like a really good car to smash. That's my car that I'm really trying to get a hold of right now to smash. Is there a car out there that you really want to smash, and then a different car that you really want to, want to race? I really want to sm uh, smash a uh, Chrysler K car, because they just seem like they'd be really, really extremely tough cars, and you, they just will take a beating. The only problem is they're they're either hard to get or they're out of my price range. <coughs> Believe it or not, in like the, the mid 80s, the K car was like the highest selling car from Chrysler. It was like the Cavalier and the Neon combined from the 80s. But yet you can't find them anymore. No. I've seen a couple K cars run. I don't I kinda have mixed reviews on them. But that's your dream car to smash as a K car. You know what, if I come across one, maybe we can work out a trade. Sounds good. Is there a car that you really want to race? Um, I want to race a Mustang, uh, which I'm going to pick up one for this season's uh, endurance race. Now, with the Mustang, the gas tank's located behind the rear axle, so you got to move that. Is there any other certain stuff that you got to do to do that? I'd build a small little another roll cage around the fuel tank that now has to be moved into the trunk. Other than that, there's nothing really different. So it's not a big chore to move it? Not really, no. In the endurance races, or the demolition derby, is there certain personal protective equipment that you wear to keep you safe? Uh, I just usually go bare minimum on, on that kind of stuff, just a normal helmet. Um, I'm probably going to start wearing a mouth... Uh, uh, mouth guard because I have chattered my teeth a few times and uh, teeth are expensive. Yeah, teeth are really expensive even up here in Canada for your American viewers. Um, when I do the demolition derby I wear a neck brace, I wear a helmet, I wear sometimes even a rib uh, rib guard mm -hmm. and when I did the endurance race I wear a four point harness. Yeah. Do you Did you wear any of that for that race? I wore the uh, four piece helmet, other, like the four piece harness, other than that 
not really. Okay. I'm going to restructure the way I do a roll cage in there to protect the driver's side door. Because when I did spin, I ended up on the corner. And at the speeds that we were going, I think that if I got hit, uh, on took a direct hit to the driver's side door, I don't think that the post that past inspection, I don't think that was going to hold up. No. How I how I viewed that uh, Flambro race that him and I went into this f last fall, I figured it was like a demolition derby at 100 kilometers an hour, and I, I think that is that race to a T. 128 cars started the race, and I think 21 finished. Yep. Um, when you crash, they don't stop. No. <laughs> they don't stop. This, this hobby that you and I have, Dylan, the endurance racing, the demolition derbies, even off-roading, is there any other hobby that you would trade any of these automotive-based hobbies for? Nope. No. <laughs> but. Thanks for watching Zach's workshop today. This is my buddy Dylan, and uh, make sure you guys hit that like button and the subscribe button, and thank you very much for watching. See you guys tomorrow.